Quarter past the hour, welcome back to The Daily Buzz. Our head drama today, if you've got drama in your life, food can often serve as a distraction. So Dr. Erica Karlinski is here. She's a clinical psychologist specializing in anxiety disorders. Good morning. Good morning. Doctor, I, I, I think a lot of people are confused about the concept of emotional eating. Just before we uh, had this conversation, I asked my camera guy, what is emotional eating? And Joe said, you mean like when I get happy after I have a cheeseburger? I said, no, Joe, that, that's not it at all. What is emotional eating? Emotional eating we also call psychological hunger. Okay. So it's not going to food because you're physically hungry. It's turning to food for comfort. Okay. Um, and obviously this causes people a lot of problems. Um, and, and so what are some of the signs that you may be an emotional eater per se? Some of the signs that you could be an emotional eater are, um, of course, if you're if you if you tend to overeat when you're sad or right. upset or sure. nervous, if you're going to those foods that you consider to be bad. Yeah, it's sort of like how some people might go for a drink, you know, in a certain situation or exactly. a smoke or something like that. You're the one that's, you know, you're faced with something emotional in life and then boom, your hand goes right to the refrigerator or into the pantry. Right, when you're vulnerable. Right. When okay. you're stressed, when you're tired, when you're upset. Right. when you're angry. So, yes. I, you know, I think there's probably a lot of people who have dealt with this kind of thing. So, so how do you break that behavior? I mean, that's the hard part. Well, the most important thing I think is, uh, believe it or not, to include your favorite foods in your life. Okay, I, interesting. Um, yes, because it's deprivation that leads to craving. And so when you're vulnerable, you're going, those people are going to go right for what they're craving, what they haven't allowed themselves. Ah, so it makes sense. So when you're not feeling vulnerable, if you're eating those favorite things, then it's not just a go-to and a punishment type of thing. Yeah. Find a way to fit them into your life. Maybe not putting a whole cheesecake in your refrigerator, right. you know, but going out once a week to have a slice of cheesecake, allowing it okay. for yourself. Um, and it must be a difficult thing too, if hey, it's not you, but it's a family member, it's, it's a friend, and you recognize, maybe after watching this, you know, this person that I know or I love is, is having a problem with emotional eating. How do you address that with that person? Well, I think talking to them about what's going on inside emotionally for them, as well as maybe offering to share, yes, a meal with them or, you know, a cup of coffee, cup of tea. Let's face it, the truth is food was the first way we were comforted as children. There's a reason yeah. why food is so comforting, why it is the center of family, of friendship okay. gatherings, and so on and so forth. So I'm a realist. I don't tell my clients to take a walk instead. Makes sense. There's more at headdrama.com.